And welcome back to the channel everybody to another patch notes video. Today I'm gonna talk about 1.4.8 which is currently on the test server build and hopefully hits the live server pretty soon. That also means that everything that you will see in this video is still topic to change. If they will change anything I will write it down in the pinned comment. As always there are timestamps so if you're only interested in specific topics you can jump right to them. Let's see what's on the menu today. And boy it's a lot. We will start with new exploration rewards. Afterwards, we will have a look at watch showers, weapon variants, antidote shot, bounty on changes, weapon progression, trade reworks, concertina bomb rework, mana changes, interaction customization options, unlock changes, new legendaries, and the present at the end of the video. As you can see, there's quite a lot, and it's just an insane patch regarding quality of life improvement. And I would say we get started. Exploration rewards. So as I mentioned, this patch will have a huge impact regarding the quality of life for us. Let's start with these envelopes. You can find them everywhere in the map in the compounds and it gives you 1100 XP, 500 bloodline XP or 3 to 6 upgrade points. I will show you in the back a few clips how these things look and where you can find them. Some people were like, uh, I think this is a bit too strong finding 3 to 6 upgrade points. I streamed the test server for I think 7 hours and in total I found 3 envelopes regarding the upgrade points. It's something that is very rare, you don't find that in every compound. So it's nothing that people will farm. I also saw a few comments, now people will just go in there, farm these envelopes and leave. Honestly, these envelopes only feel like a bonus. It's nothing that people will probably farm. 1000 Hunter XP is a lot, also 500 Bloodline XP. Keep in mind the Hunter XP and the skill points, if you do not survive that round, it doesn't do anything. I think it's a nice addition, it gives the map a little bit more life and you have more to look for. Alright, then the next thing is, we have, let me just quickly check, Gun Oil and Blueprints. The Gun Oil, at least when I recorded it, like the footage for this video was not on the test server yet. But it will cleanse the currently equipped weapon. What does it mean? Um, when you loot a weapon or when you get downed and revived, the gun is muddy and dirty. Use the gun oil to clean it and then it looks pristine again. Nice. Again, uh, not a huge impact, but still a nice little detail. Then we have the blueprints and they unlock the next variant for the currently equipped weapon. That is honestly very nice and why is that so? Because it works also for consumables and tools. For example, fresh prestige, small vitality shots, they suck. You equip them, you find a blueprint, you use the blueprint, big vitality shots unlocked. This is awesome. They seem to be very, very rare. Didn't find one yet. But if you find one, sweet. Especially with the combination, and we'll talk about it later, with the changes regarding the progression system regarding the unlocks. This will be sweet. Now people will be asking how many people can use these envelopes, this gun oil or this blueprint. Up to two. Everything that I'm gonna mention today will have this rule of two. So your teammate and yourself, you can loot. If you play trios, fight for it. Then we have small bags. They are small money bags. You can find them almost everywhere. They are actually pretty common. They give you only up to 25 bucks though. Like you loot that and it shows you like $300, $400. It's the impact you will probably not feel that at all. Maybe when you play thousands of hours and you will feel that otherwise you won't. A handful of blood bonds, that is nice. You only get them when you extract obviously. And yeah, honestly this patch triggers my inner loot goblin a lot. We have also trade charms. And this is huge, like in compounds you can find now random traits. They look like that here in the background. It tells you in advance what kind of trait it will be. So if you don't want it, don't pick it. Up to two people can use it. Also have fun hunting meatheads because they have a 50% chance to drop one. I will show now in the background a few clips how that looks. I, I don't know yet how much I like this because this has a severe impact regarding how you progress with your hunters. 
they progress faster. It's nice because when you have a level 50 hunters and they die, you can't rebuy the health chunks, right? So you have to get rid of trades to get skill points. However, if you found an envelope in the match, you get some skill points, so you don't have to do that. And it's also closing a little bit the gap between the people who are very skilled and have lots of level 50 hunters with full trades and you're maybe somebody who is still struggling and you have to play a lot of fresh hunters and they're missing trades. And trades, they have a huge impact in the PvP fights. But if you're lucky and you find like two or three trades, you suddenly have Doctor, you suddenly have Lightfoot, Pitcher. I think overall this is a good change. Again, my loot goblins triggered. Poor meatheads, they get hunted down now so quickly without mercy. Well, enjoy hunting some trade charms. Let's jump to the next topic. Watchtowers. Now, what are watchtowers? Uh, new large type of structures can be found in three locations. It's west from Stillwater and south from Lock Bay for the old map, and for the Stillwater map, it's northeast from the fort. So they're replacing the normal towers. I think the one next to Stillwater just got moved a little bit more north. And they're amazing. They're adding so much immersion for the map. And they're not just towers. They are actually small supply points. They will always provide you with something interesting. Ammo boxes, loot boxes, health or weapon on top. They look nice. Uh, I want to run a clip in the background probably right now where I can show you a little bit how these watchtowers work. And what about the old towers? Even the old towers got a rework. They got upgraded, so you can find now an ammo box, health or a weapon on top. Cool, you can actually do now naked hunter runs and it's not that difficult anymore. These watchtowers though are Mostly a death trap to be honest. They are I think 90% of the watchtower is made out of wood Everybody can snipe you up there But that also works the other way around sitting in that watchtower South from lock bay and people don't check the tower first. Oh boy, you will have fun there Okay, watchtowers pretty nice small supply points adds a ton of immersion for the map I want more like this. Seriously. Give me more. More Watchtower stuff. Alright, next topic. <laughs> New weapon variants. Alright, so 1.4.8 will bring us two new weapon variants. First one will be the Winfield M1873 Musket Bayonet. Now you're probably like, is this a long ammo single shot Winfield with a bayonet? No, Musket was just back in the days. The overall description of a rifle with a stock, if I remember that correctly. The big difference to the normal Winfield is it has two more bullets in it and it's shooting slower. Not by much. I have here in the background now a clip where I show you levering so you can see it. Because there are a lot of people that didn't believe me that levering with the Winfield musket is slower than for example with a normal windfield. But you can see this. I know two bullets more in the musket, so be careful with that one. But if you just look at the initial bullets, the normal Winnie is faster. Just keep in mind that I did no recoil control at all, so it looks pretty funny where the bullets are going. The hip fire is the same, the bloom of the crosshair while standing or while being crouched is the same. Then the bayonet on that thing is super nice, and I personally think. This will be my go-to Winfield. It's the perfect all-rounder. The problem with, for example, the Winnie Talon, or Talon, however you want to pronounce it, I got quite some shit in the latest video where I pronounced it wrong, um, is the way it arcs. And it has not enough of range. The bayonet gives you this range, close range, to kill people charging with a knife efficiently. Levering is slower, yes, but it's still fast enough. Mid-range, Winnie is still good, and the only issue that you will have is shooting above 100 meters. But the Winfield is not designed for that. They also have different iron sights, 
since the front part is further away from you, it looks different and also the shape is different. It's a little bit thicker actually. I like it. So, Winfield M1873 Musket Burnet. Thumbs up. Love it. People are already complaining. Oh, another Winfield. Give us something else. Soon. Then, the next one. Uh, this will be a little bit... Um, yeah, uh, we have the Nagant M1895 Officer Carbine Deadeye. Now, I know that lots of people already kind of hate, that's probably a too strong description, um, the Officer Carbine, it's also called the Head Clicker. I saw a lot of comments, uh, it's already called the Head Clicker, now you give it a scope, what the fuck, uh, it's way too good. Now, let's look at first at the facts. So, Deadeye, short scope. Strong on recall when zoomed in. And it costs, I wouldn't say a lot, but way more. Because the basic variant also costs more. They pumped up that thing from, I think, 80 bucks to 155 and 211 if you wanted a Deadeye scope on it. <sighs> now, everybody's spamming my chat. Uh, this is OP, 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 OP. I actually don't think so, because yes, more precision at range, but you're trading that for lower FOV, you see way less on your screen when you play a thing, and the bloom of the crosshair when you hip fire at close range is worse, because it's bigger, and I personally, dead eye scope, short range, dude, I prefer the iron sights from the thing way more. You will see, obviously, with the release of 1.4.8, way more Officer Carbine Dead Eyes. Not because it will be the new meta, maybe, we will see, but because it's new and people want to test it and people want to try it out. So give the release of this patch two weeks and then you will see how good it actually is. I personally think there will be not a huge increase regarding Officer Carbine players. You have already some, they became more. But I don't think there will be more. So I think it's like the Officer Carbine people will maybe switch to the Deadeye. But I don't think just because you have now an Officer Carbine Deadeye, more people will play this gun. We will see. I, I personally am not a huge fan of the Deadeye. For me, it's Marksman Scope or Sniper Scope or Iron Sights. A little bit of extra zoom for all the drawbacks, at least for the Vetterly or for the Martini Henry, it's not doing it for me. But it's the same with Iron Sights, it's huge personal preference. Give that thing a little bit of time. They might tweak it even a little bit because there's one issue that I actually have with this gun. But again, I'm not all knowing, so I might be wrong regarding this one. The recoil on the thing is... They could increase that by a little bit. Like the two taps or three taps with that thing when you aim for the body. That's fast. That's fast. Like if you're fighting at the sweet range, like 30, 40 meters with that thing, Ooh, baby, you better have some cover right next to you. All right, again, I just ask you kindly to not flip your table yet and wait a little bit, be patient, give good feedback and not just go full re. Okay, thank you very much. Next point. Antidote shot rework. Come on. Honestly, is anybody surprised? That, that had to happen. 25 bucks to be immune to poison and poison damage for half an hour, it was too strong. Now, it no longer reduces all poison damage, physical attacks hurt as normal, still provides protection from poisoning and poison clouds. So what does that actually mean? The poison shot only gives you now immunity to the poison effect. So you can still heal and your vision will not be blurry, but you suffer the full damage. Yes, it also means then when a hive swarm is attacking you from a hive bomb or from a hive lady, that shit hurts again. That shit hurts again. But still, you have full vision and you can heal. Will I swap it now with something else? Is it maybe a buff for the hive bomb? Is it a buff for Mithridatus? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Spider is also now a little bit tougher if you don't use any dodge shot anymore. Still no problem, but... I like this change. Had to happen, guys. I I'm sorry, like 25 bucks for this was just way too strong. And I think just shortening the time is not a good way to balance it. 
I think this one right here. Although we will probably hate it for the first couple days. It's nice. I will probably not play the antidote shot anymore. <laughs> Mission accomplished, question mark. Next topic. Bounty hunt changes. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this patch has a huge focus on quality of life improvements. And as you can see in the back, <laughs> absolutely. Clues provide one second of dark side boost when carrying a bounty. Nice. More motivation for people to run the gauntlet and if you try to extract and you're crossing like the undiscovered territory, you still get some dark side boost that helps you fight other people. Improved extraction distribution. What does it mean? That means there's always space between at least two extractions. So yeah, two can be close to each other, but the third one has to be, I think, at least 500 meters away. I'm not 100% sure regarding that one. It doesn't really matter. You don't have now three extraction points at Hemlock and Hyde while you banish the boss at Docks. Awesome. They were like during the stream, oh, these are just minor changes. And I'm like, this is not a minor change. This is huge. This is awesome. Carrying the bounty and trying to extract will be easier. Extraction camping will be tougher. Suck it. Love it. Then, banishing resource or health chunks. Perfect. Honestly, when you fight for the bounty and you end up in a huge PvP fight and you get downed a couple times and you're at your last bar, banish, bam, all health chunks. Again, if people try to intercept you because they dodged the whole fight at the beginning, they don't have this massive advantage. They most likely play long ammo. Not hating on long ammo, by the way. It's just the way it works. Body shot, killing you because you miss one health chunk. It's just annoying. Love it. By the way, I would still like to see a system that gives you health chunks back without the banish. Without the banish. That would be nice. Sometimes you pick it up, you fight everybody in the compound, got down, revived. There's no more way, if it was the last bounty, to get your health chunk back. I still would like to see a dog tech mechanic. For example, you kill a player and you loot him, you get a soul shard. Right? It doesn't really matter how you name that thing, by the way. The moment you collect three, you start a ritual, a ritual on the map. Everybody can see that, like a banish, takes a minute or something like that, and bam, you get a health chunk back. I would love to see this. It should be tough to get this, that's why I kinda link it to PvP engagements and not to PvE. Love it. Another thing that I would like to see maybe is if they do not want to implement that, because honestly, new looting system, new icons, uh, new banish mechanic, new event mechanic, that's a lot of shit that you have to do, right? That's nothing that you like, you snap your finger and it's in the game. I would like to have, and I don't think that was my idea, no, I don't think that was my idea, that was from somebody in chat, sorry if I don't remember you, I'm, I'm, I deeply apologize. And that would be an adrenaline shot. So what is it doing? You use that thing and for, you can adjust it by the way, for two minutes, three minutes, maybe four minutes, maybe one minute, I don't care actually, your life jumps back for full, to full, whoops. <laughs> so people engage you, you take the shot and for two to three minutes, you can equally fight them. Love it, honestly. This is nice. And after the two or three minutes, the effect wears off and you're back to your normal health. I would like to see that. Honestly, honestly, it's just adding another shot. It's probably way more complicated and my noob ass doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, so what do you think about that one? Drop a comment in the comment section. Where else? And I think we have a look at the next topic. Faster weapon progression. I know, <laughs> I sound now repetitive and boring, but quality of life changes. It's not possible to overspill XP for unlocks. You can unlock multiple variants per mission. This is super nice, especially with the beginner weapons, which have almost no requirement for the XP to unlock it. Like a couple hundred, I think. You can unlock probably the whole chain now in one match. That means when you play the Winnie C, you unlock the Winnie Marksman is the next one, right? I think it's the Winnie Marksman. And then it's the Science Winnie. You can unlock the whole chain. It, it, it's sick. And I love it. And it's so good. It was so annoying. Remember when you like finished a map or a match and you check the progression bar and there is like this 1% missing? Doesn't matter. Go to the next match, play the full match and you get that 1% and the rest of the XP. Awesome. Then 
with the blueprints, by the way, you have to be a little bit careful because the blueprints will only give, give you the amount of XP missing to the next level. All right. So, for example, you are missing 5% XP for your next weapon unlock. Do not take a blueprint. Take a blueprint for something that you don't have unlocked yet, like vitality shots, poison shots, or something like that. Love this. Multiple variants per mission. You can probably unlock the beginner weapons in one match, like both of them. Crazy. All right, that's it. Next topic. Trade rework. Cool. Now, they reworked Ghoul, and right now it gives you 5 HP upon killing a nearby Grunt. Can jump to empty health bars, plant price, 7 upgrade points. Before you start screaming now, because the stream chat went apeshit in the official uh, Crytek channel, this is not as strong as it looks like. It gives you 5 HP upon killing a nearby Grunt. Nearby. It, this is crucial, like, you cannot play with a science Winnie or just shoot a grunt 100 meters away, get 5 HP, wait for the regeneration of the bar and save a medkit charge. It has to be close. I think it's it's just a couple meters, I think it's 4 meters, something like that. So you it's basically melee range. And it only works when you're not under pressure. <laughs> not being under pressure in a hunt showdown PvP fight. Doesn't happen that often, am I right? And it only works if there's grunts around. If you are fighting in a boss compound, that thing is very often already empty. If you're fighting at an extraction, there are rarely enemies, right? If you intercept them somewhere in the open, there are rarely enemies. They, they, they have to be close to you, and it only works with grunts. It doesn't work with leeches, it doesn't work with a hive, it doesn't work with an armor. And then you still have to wait until the regeneration kicks in. This is something it helps you when you're god damn it that grunt took 25 hp from me i needed to find for a medkit charge that's the main use of that thing again quality of life in actual combat doctor will still be so much stronger it will be so much stronger it's faster it heals more and it's reliable that's just my opinion maybe can jump to empty health bars so this is nice you kill them and you just heal up over time, save medkit charges. That, that's exactly what it's doing. Of course, there will be moments where that thing will be clutch and you get enough time, like you're kiting people, you're falling back. Oh, there's one grunt, let me tap that really quick with a melee attack, restore 50. Will definitely happen, but it's not as reliable as a medkit charge with Doctor. And also seven upgrade points, dude, that's a lot. That's fanning level. That's doctor level. This is this is not a trait that I that I pick after my first win. Maybe not even after my second win. Uh, honestly, if this is five or six points, way better. I think they did it on purpose, a little bit expensive at the beginning to, <laughs> to dampen a little bit the uh, the reboys. But yeah, I think it's too expensive. For seven points, I will not buy this. I will buy this for, for testing, if I find it with a uh, charm, nice, if the hunter spawns with that, nice, I will probably not respec it, if I get it in quick play, nice, but that's it, just nice. Next topic. Concertina bomb rework. Oh sweet baby Jesus. So the Concertina bomb was always, in my opinion, kind of meh, in quick play it's nice, but in bounty hunt. You used it mostly for zoning and for blocking revives. You never used it while attacking, or most of the time you didn't do that. The toss range is too short, and the detonation timer with 1.5 seconds gives enemy hunters, like even if you toss it right next to them, and they're not asleep, they will still dodge it by running away. But they changed that, so the detonation timer got reduced from 1.5 seconds to 0.5 seconds. So what does that actually mean? Will it compete now with explosives? Honestly, time will tell. I, right now, I don't think so. But it's strong. Like, it's an insta-kill if you're too close, and nothing protects you from that. It's getting extra dirty if you combine it with a flash bomb. But then you're already sacrificing two consumables for a possible kill. And I think at max you will get only one player and not complete wipes of teams. Now, before you go like, Jesus, this sounds uh, 
like frag bomb 2.0 insta kill if you're too close no cooking time dauntless doesn't work the choke bomb doesn't block it and if you get a kill you automatically block a revive uh, i would say that the dynamite bundle and the frag bomb are so superior um, mostly because of the tossing range. Without pitcher, it's just crazy. You Most of the time you can't even throw it through a window properly. And you have to combine it with something else. So you need to combine it with flash bomb. Or you need enemies that you caught off guard or that they don't pay attention. You, know? you can hear selecting the concertina bomb. You can hear the priming of the concertina bomb. And if you didn't start running by now as the enemy, it's your fault. Ah. The only thing is now, you can't dodge it that easily anymore. If it lands next to you, you're dead. You, you're most likely dead. Try it out, because once you kill somebody with it, no easy way to revive them. They kind of need to have at least a dynamite stick to clear it quickly. Otherwise, you can hear it when they're working at removing the wire. I can't wait to make a video regarding some of the concertina bomb clips that I already collected. I personally think or I hope that they will keep it that way because the memes are extra spicy and it's just such a pleasant change that I can use this now for defense but also for offense. Now, next topic and I guarantee you, you will like that one. Interaction customization options. My lord, finally. So what does this action mean? You know the white glow around windows, doors and all the other stuff that is annoying when you try to shoot through cracks? Exactly. You can get rid of that now. You have three options. Get rid of all, keep all or mixed. And mixed disables the white pulsating glow for windows and doors. And it's so nice. Thank you guys that you made us a thing. Pick the setting that you like and have fun with it. Unlock changes. Let's keep this one short. Unlike most of the stuff, they're giving us now the dusters from the start, which is nice. And also the spyglass. Yeah, okay. The officer drops a few ranks and so does the big windfield. I like both changes. The machete changes. Yeah, it's okay. I'm, I will still probably not play it. Um, pushing it from rank 12 up to rank 24 is maybe an hour of playtime. So who cares? The most important changes are the dusters, the officer and the windfield. It gives you more and stronger options after a fresh prestige. Especially with the new unlock system, this would be nice. Next topic. Melee changes. Alright, let's do this one quickly. Hit detection improvements, benefits, yeah, yeah, I know, spelling mistake from them. Machete, <laughs> heavy knife, the hatchet and the halons. So, Remember when I always say um, I don't like the heavy knife because the regular knife with the heavy attack has more range than the heavy knife with the heavy attack? Dennis actually told me that is not correct and they should have the same range. I would just believe him because, you know, he's the lead designer. Um, it doesn't feel like that. So they reworked this and it should feel now way better. I played a bit with the machete. Feels better, especially with the horizontal attack. It's more reliable now. Again, nothing too big because I will still not take these weapons. And a hatchet, maybe. And I would say we have a look at the next topic. New legendaries. Oh my god, it's finally happening. The silenced rifles both get a legendary skin. So we have the Vagrant, which is the silenced Winnie. And it's cheap. Like, it's not a DLC. You can buy it with Bloodborne. It's 200 BBs. That's it. Very unique skin. I like that they changed the art for the suppressor. It's something completely new with this trash can. I'm digging it. Super fun to play as well. And then we have the, the cell silence. The spark silenced. And it's just so noble. The engravings are super pretty and it looks like the metal was exposed to quite some heat. You seeing that? It's a bit more expensive with 400 BBs, but I will definitely buy that one. You can now build complete science loadouts with legendary skins only. Fucking yes. And the final one is the Officer Brawler, the Death Letter, with a ton of hints for the new boss. It's a bird thing. Has to be. Dennis even confirmed that the weird creature on the teaser pictures is the boss. 
Looks like the crows try to get some revenge on us. We will see about that one. Um, three new legendaries. None of them are too expensive. Silencers and a lot of hints for the new boss. Go to the 3D view. I'm not going to spoil it. Have a look for yourself. Let's have a look at the final topic. Christmas presents. So yeah, sounds weird, but at the end of the latest dev stream, they showed us this. Honestly, I smell a Christmas event, which is surprising to me. They just had the Halloween event. I didn't expect them to be able to uh, get a new one ready so soon. I was more expecting, you know, uh, the Christmas decoration from last year, Christmas tree or other stuff. But now it seems like we're getting a little bit more. Nice. That probably means new legendaries. Maybe we get something with an ice theme or something like that. I, I don't think they will give us like a <laughs> Christmas present themed new legendaries. Uh, well, you never know. <laughs> Let's see. They will probably announce it pretty soon. Alright, I think I covered most of the things from the patch notes. Hope you enjoyed it. And now, let me roll the outro. So that's patch 1.4.8 for you. The focus is obviously on quality of life changes and I totally achieved that in my opinion. I like probably 95% of the stuff they will add. 5% we will have to test first and then if it's really not working for us, we will give them constructive feedback. People increasing my quality of life by a lot are displayed here. Thank you so much guys for the huge support. Thank you for watching. We got some spice memes and some objectives for the loot goblin spirit in all of us. I hope the patch drops soon on the live server. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye bye.